Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Damien Lewis. In the news this week, there's disappointment as one member of the Chipping Norton Amateur Dramatic Society realises he's only been given one line in this year's panto. Liverpool Council deny wasting money on a new initiative to check occupancy levels in high-rise flats. <laughs> and at a hotel on location, after his producer's husband turns up unexpectedly, Andrew Marr decides to go back to his own room. <laughs> With Ian tonight is the leader of UKIP, who was once the subject of a BBC documentary, which in the end they decided not to show. Only in that instance, it wasn't because they'd made a Christmas special celebrating him as a national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome <laughs> Nigel Farage, <laughs> MEP. <laughs> And with Paul is a star of cult movie, this is Spinal Tap and The Simpsons. He does the voice of evil tycoon Mr Burns, which many people assume is based on Rupert Murdoch. He also voices the character of Smithers, yellow, fawning, but ultimately powerless. Presumably based on Nick Clegg. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Harry Shearer. And uh, let's get started with the biggest stories of the week. Uh, Paul and Harry, mm -hmm. can you take a look at this? This is the Muppets protesting the fact that Romney threatened to cancel the funding for Big Bird. That was... Uh, and there's a manly decision there. I'm going to go... Uh, uh, no, I'll go Where's the loo? <laughs> <laughs> Indoor fireworks, yes. Uh, Barack Obama has, has, has Chicago won. was going to have the Olympics. They had confetti left over. <laughs> And these are people too young to be that disappointed. <laughs> uh, and still, I don't know where to vote. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, this is the American election. Um, Barack Obama has won convincingly. Did he stay out? No, but I wasn't voting. Or, indeed, run him. <laughs> so, I, I knew I'd find out in the morning. What's Radio 4 for? Yeah, Radio 4 4. Is there two of them? <laughs> and they should have had a digest, shouldn't they? I watched it and it's just lots of people saying, too close to call, too close to call, neck and neck, neck and neck. Oh, he's won easily. Yeah. <laughs> Did I see you on ITV? Um, you yeah, on ITV? Uh, yeah, I oh, made a brief appearance. Saucy little monkey. <laughs> Is it a good night? Yeah, it was a terrific night. I went to the American Embassy. I came in and a woman said, are you Democrat or Republican? And I said, well, I don't get a vote. And she gave me a, a, a Republican badge and said, there's a lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I think I know which way this one's going. <laughs> Isn't the story here that 93% of black voters voted for Obama, over 70% of the Hispanic voters voted for Obama, and actually the Republicans have had it, haven't they, in America? That was what one of the Republicans said afterwards, said, what's the problem here? And he said, we're not generating enough angry white guys. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got to start producing more of them. Well, with 23 million people unemployed, you'd think there'd be enough angry white guys yeah. around. But... You said voters. Are you Farage? Are you accusing him of having a dodgy I mean, American I mean, accent? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, there does seem to have been a bit of an election in the US this week. That's absolutely right, gents. Uh, to try and boost their campaign, uh, Mitt Romney and uh, Paul Ryan, of course, had one last minute push in Ohio. Anyone know what they uh, christened this effort of theirs? Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> the blip, the disaster, the good thing. The blitz. They called it the Romney Ryan Real Recovery Road Rally. <laughs> <laughs> Bit inconsiderate towards Japanese Americans. Um, <laughs> our Prime Minister, he tweeted away like crazy. Um, anyone know what he tweeted? They'd been to a baseball match together, hadn't they? He's now on Obama's side, isn't he? The Tory party now support the left wing party, is that right? Mm, but they're only left by no one's terms, aren't they? Obama's <laughs> domestic policy is severely to the right of Richard Nixon's. <laughs> The Americans have a Conservative Party and a very Conservative That's right. Party. <laughs> and then they have a Tea Party, which you just don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> so our Prime Minister tweeted, Warm congratulations to my friend at Barack Obama. Look forward to continuing to work together. Well, now he's not allowed to text Rebecca Brooks anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> As always, during the campaign, there were accusations of uh, negative campaigning, of course, yes. slurring attempts at media manipulation. Anyone see any examples of that? Well, I think that there was a landmark moment where, uh, um, in the early part of the campaign, that is to say in 1978, when uh, <laughs> <laughs> Obama's supporters were criticizing him for not saying that Romney lied. 
There was, they, uh, they spent two and a half billion pounds. Yes, on, dollars. On, do, yeah, dollars. And this was, I mean, in the final bit, the adverts were about who would waste most money in America. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> By the way, an 18-month election cycle, you, mm. could, you could gestate an entire elephant in that time. <laughs> <laughs> there was this uh, widely distributed image. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> How did you get the dog to stay on his face like that? <laughs> there were some uh, technical issues with voting machines. Did anyone see that story? Yes. There was a voting machine where a, a person kept pressing the button for Obama and the machine kept registering Romney. That's, a, that's, that's absolutely right. It's magic. And he still lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These things are harder to fix than you think. <laughs> That's an appalling yeah. accusation. <laughs> Top US political expert, <clears throat> Piers Morgan, uh, ah. was on uh, <laughs> hand with his uh, customary insightful analysis mm. uh, on the day of the election. Uh, what bombshells did he come up with? Did he predict a Clinton win? <laughs> <laughs> he revealed, I haven't a clue who's going to win the US election, <laughs> and nor has anyone else. Thanks for that, Piers. <laughs> Of course, it's quite important during the campaign mm. uh, to keep control of your image. Yes. Obama seems to have had the edge there, too, over Mr Romney. Here's one that was released of him. And here's one that emerged of Mitt Romney. <laughs> 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 That's not a photograph. You want to be, be you, posed if, in. If you want normal people to resonate with you, have a helicopter behind you, not a jet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone know about the eyebrow index? Yeah, the longer or shorter or thicker <laughs> or uh, slightly less dense eyebrow, the more or less chance you've got of winning or losing in an election. <laughs> Seven of the last eight elections have been won by the candidate with the best groomed eyebrows. <laughs> anyway, uh, the advice was that Romney should go pluck himself. <laughs> uh, Mitt Romney became famous for his gaffes during the campaign. Oh, yes. Anyone remember any of uh, Romney's gaffes? I like firing people was one that he said a few months back. He actually said, I like to be able to fire people. I like to be able to fire people. Yeah. Yes. There, was, there was a particularly uh, surreal one, uh, which he uh, said back in January. Yeah. I believe in an America where millions of Americans believe in an America that's the America millions of Americans <laughs> believe in. <laughs> that's the America I love. <laughs> <laughs> Although but... that was probably just an auto-cue error, to be fair. <laughs> auto-cue error, to just be fair, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the day before the election, he was heard to say to a, his, one of his final rallies, tomorrow is the beginning of a better tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> there was also a few awkward one at the fundraiser, and he didn't realise he was being recorded. There are 47% of the people who will vote for the president no matter what. 47% who are with him, who are dependent upon government, who believe that they are victims. My job is not to worry about those people. <laughs> Nigel, bit far or pretty standard right-wing nut job stuff? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> Romney admitted having strapped his dog to the top of the car mm. for a 12-hour drive mm. from Boston to Ontario. <laughs> Nigel, bit far or pretty standard right-wing <laughs> nut <laughs> <laughs> And then his wife's plane was forced to land after smoke was detected and uh, he told the press, when you have a fire in an aircraft, there's no place to go and you can't find any oxygen <laughs> from outside the aircraft because the windows don't yeah. open. I don't know why they don't do that. It's a real problem. <laughs> Oh Nigel, yeah. anything to uh, you? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, no, I mean, even, even UKIP on a bad day can't compete with Romney. No, no, <laughs> quite. Um, yes, it's the US election. The result was in the balance until the last minute. Mind you, if Americans think that election was exciting, just wait till Britain elects its regional police commissioners. <laughs> Explaining the complexities of the Electoral College system to its readers, the Mirror described it as the race to 270 votes. A figure that UKIP can only dream of. <laughs> One Romney supporter who took defeat badly was Donald Trump, who tweeted, We can't let this happen. We should march on Washington and stop this travesty. All right, Donald, keep your hair on. <laughs> Ian and Nigel, will you take a look at this? Ah, the lady of the moment. Nadine Doris, mm. that's Oz. Yeah. Dennis McShane mm. in a helmet. 
yeah, and these some are... elderly computers. Uh, the last time I was on this programme, Ian, in fact, you had a very serious dig at me. Uh, because I'd been accused. Surely not. No, honestly. <laughs> oh, I, very I was very surprised about it. Mm. I needed of... counselling. <laughs> 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 I did. You I, my... I can't remember anything about it. Was it two million pounds of expenses? Apparently, I did. That's <laughs> right. uh, the guy that accused me of yep. misusing two million pounds of, 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 of taxpayers' money was none other than. Dennis McShay. Scumbag McShay. <laughs> who, whilst he was accusing me of this, in was... fact, used taxpayers' money and, in fact, over the course of 18 months, um, bought eight laptops and gave them to assistants and interns as gifts. But worse than that, then set up an organisation called the European Policy Institute, uh, claimed expenses on that, and was actually signing fraudulent cheques. So, yeah. so I feel pretty embittered. Although, Nigel, you did have a meeting with Andrew Neil recently, didn't you? Yeah. After you Hang said on, in 2009. I haven't finished this yet. <laughs> I'm still enjoying the expenses. You'd, you'd start publishing your expenses quarterly, but you, you still don't. Well, we're we doing them six monthly Apparently. instead. Let, should we have, let's have a quick look at this. There's no information about your expenses since December 2011. That's nearly a year. Yeah. We've, in fact, we're doing it every six months, not quarterly. That seemed a more practical way to do it. Well, well, and you're well, you quite right. You haven't done it this year at all. I haven't done it this year at all because I simply haven't had time to do it. Yeah, there's a big difference here. <laughs> <laughs> there's a very big difference here. These are not expenses that I'm claiming for. These are allowances that I'm given because that's the European system. And voluntarily what I do is publish this stuff online, which I've done once every six months since 2009. No OK, story. that was... Sorry. Oh, can we get back to the Sorry, other guy? no story. No story. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there is a story, but we <laughs> mustn't... <laughs> we mustn't let off the other guy. There's no point no. going back into history. Let's get back to him. Because not deserves, only did McShane falsify invoices, not only did he claim expenses that he had no right to, not only did he sign bits of paper, mm. but he's furiously pro-European. Well, that's, that's even more serious, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think... Which I would suggest is probably, what, two years? Three uh, years? Well, minimum. <laughs> minimum. I cannot understand why no-one spotted it, cos he set up this policy institute, yeah. signed the cheques himself, under the name of Mr Michael Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, I've made that no. bit up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he it... might go to jail, do you think? He will. You think he definitely will? Absolutely, no question. He's got to go to jail. MPs have gone to jail for far less yeah. than he's done, and he deserves it. Right, scumbag. <laughs> if he does go down, he might want to dress a little bit differently. <laughs> That's him putting an expense claim in for the imaginary pair of trousers he's wearing. <laughs> he's had to resign after submitting uh, false invoices. According to The Sun, he claimed for 14 computers in three years. 14. And still Comet went bust. <laughs> um, what are your feelings about Nadine Dorries? Well, there's a big debate going on. Is Nadine going to defect? to UK, and I thought... That is the big debate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is she going to go? I don't know. Please, tell us. She was on this team with you, wasn't she? She was here. A lot of people think she's slightly unhinged and that um, going to be on a reality show when you're meant to be in Parliament is a bad move. But if you think that would be a good member of your party, <laughs> go for it. I didn't <laughs> say it would. <laughs> she's gone off to be on I'm a Celebrity, Get yeah. Me Out of Here. Mm. And okay. Parliament's actually sitting. I mean, there are loads of votes. She's not going to help her constituents. A lot of people in Parliament are quite cross. Does she still get her salary while she's away on a reality yes, show? Yes, she does. She does. Oh, yes, yeah, she, she does. does. Recently, she said, if 16 million people are watching I'm a Celebrity, that is where MPs should be going. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Nadine, millions of people watched a bloke leap out of a balloon from the edge <laughs> of space, if you're interested. <laughs> She, uh, she did tell people that she's going to do this in order to raise important issues. Do you think she's ever seen the programme? <laughs> Eric Pickles had something to say about it. Have a look at this. Well, I should be watching it uh, for the first time for um, a long time. And as I say, I should be ringing in religiously every week to keep her there. <laughs> <laughs> Conservative Witch responded by suspending her until she explains her actions. News that Heat magazine felt it uh, necessary to impart to their readers, adding, whips doesn't mean sexy whips. <laughs> <laughs> they're the people who get everyone to turn up to vote and tell them off when they're naughty. <laughs> said their chief political correspondent. <laughs> um, meanwhile, uh, who else has uh, misunderstood the nature of their job at Westminster in the last uh, couple of weeks? 
Nick well, Clegg. It's been more than the last few weeks, hasn't it? <laughs> Ken, Ken Clark. Thank you. He said he doesn't know what his new government job is, describing his role of minister without portfolio as being particularly mysterious and baffling. <laughs> <laughs> or as you would say, Nigel, baffling. <laughs> Um, in stark contrast to the glitzy showbiz razzmatazz of US politics, one of Britain's leading political figures, Nadine Dorries, is going on, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Nadine Dorries justified her decision to appear, saying, the important thing is 16 million people watch the show. Quite. Why do you think I'm doing this show? <laughs> Sorry. Hmm? Is that all? <laughs> including the repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Uh, Nadine, uh, after the Tory party suspended Nadine, uh, known to the tabloids as Mad Nad, mm. The Sun reported Ms Dorries may join UKIP. Oh, come on, she may be mad, but she's not insane. <laughs> uh, when told of Nadine Dorries' TV plans, Paul Duckett, chairman of her mid-Bedfordshire constituency, declared... I can think of better ways of spending my time than sitting in a swamp with a bucket of maggots <laughs> on my head. <laughs> Maybe, but being constituency chairman of the Mid-Bedfordshire Conservative Association <laughs> probably isn't one of them. <laughs> and so to round two, the strengthometer of news. Yeah. Here's the first one. Yep. Yeah. UKIP's now got to start campaigning across the whole of Europe, and that's what that flag means. <laughs> really? I think so. Yeah. Who do you think you're kidding, Mr. Farrar? Yeah, well, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that Britain has invaded 90% oh, yeah, of the world's be. nations, says author Stuart Laycock, uh, who's written a book claiming that Britain has invaded 171 out of a possible 193 countries. <laughs> Why is this statistic a little uh, questionable? It was made up. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, Lake, Laycock has allowed for it mm. to include anywhere the British achieved a military presence. Ah. Through force, negotiation or payment, mm. as well as incursions by any pirates operating with the approval of their <laughs> government. There are a few countries unlucky enough never to have enjoyed a British invasion. Mm. Sweden, the Marshall Islands. <laughs> I don't know where they are. Well, that's why they've never been invaded. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, you kick for or against invading other countries on the whole? Uh, <laughs> if you had to, go. Yeah, we'd have to. Who'd invade. be top of your list? <laughs> it's got to be Belgium. <laughs> it's pretty much a non country, and we might do it a favour. <laughs> In, um. Give it a third language. Is, you know, whenever I say that, I get into terrible trouble. I can't think why. No, it's all right. This no. is just a co production with a Belgian company. <laughs> <laughs> um, the author estimates that Britain has invaded 171 countries. Only three less than Prince Philip has insulted. <laughs> the book claims that we even invaded Vietnam in the 1600s. So the Americans were late joining that one as well. <laughs> right, fingers on buzzers, please, yeah. teams. Judging by the sort of speech bubble there is, it's something to do with sort of Midlands accents are harder to understand than any other accent. And there's a particular irony to this answer. It's hard to understand your accent. Do you think so? No, I'm just saying that would be the irony. Oh, I see, yes, yes, indeed, absolutely. You two are a brilliant team. This is teamwork. <laughs> it's teamwork. What, 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 I don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that an £11 million phone service yeah. at Birmingham City Council is sending callers mad because it can't understand brummy accents. <laughs> According to the Sun, it demands an account reference number, yet cannot cope with numbers such as five. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> they don't all make that face when they're talking. <laughs> and nine. <laughs> Apparently, users have tried for up to half an hour just to get past the first question. <laughs> Wonder why. Um, <laughs> what does the machine do when it doesn't understand? Um, it electrocutes the uh, applicant. <laughs> It apparently continuously says, can you please repeat? <laughs> the system is actually installed in the rent arrears department, according to the Telegraph. It meant the council were able to cut the jobs of 55 call centre staff, who, ironically, are all now behind with their <laughs> rent and have to speak to the very machine that put them out of a job. <laughs> 
time now for the odd one out round, yes. uh, Paul and Harry. Your four mm -hmm. are Vern Troyer, President William Howard Taft, Gordon Brown and Stuart Roger. I, don't, I have no idea. Any clues? They all got stuck. Gordon Brown, he got stuck in number 10. For God, it took years <laughs> to get him out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they tried greasing him and everything. They tried to get through the door. They couldn't get him out. Yeah, they they him all out. got stuck in lifts. In the bog. Yes, bathroom. Bathroom. Apart from Stuart Roger, yes. who deliberately hid in the toilet for an hour in order to heckle David Cameron. He burst into a room where Cameron was talking yeah. and he shouted, yeah. no ifs, no buts, no public sector cuts. Mm. Spend an hour in the toilet, you'd think you'd come up with something better than that. <laughs> He's got a hundred hours community service heckling Michael McIntyre. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell us about William Taft, then, President Taft. What did he do? He was President of the United States. So yeah. have a quick guess what number he was. Four, yeah, no, he was 27. It's not all right. It's not all right, is it? No. Yeah, he's the 27th wow. President of the United States. <laughs> Woo! No. I'm taking you to the track. <laughs> he once got himself stuck in the presidential bathtub. He was the heaviest ever president, weighing in at a whopping... 21 stone. Yes. Six men apparently dislodged him yes. uh, with a gallon of butter. Oh. Not to grease the sides, just to lure him out. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Taft is a one-term president, and that term was fatso. <laughs> this year, Vern Troyer got stuck in an aeroplane toilet, and Gordon Brown once locked himself in a toilet and had to be freed by his arch-nemesis, Tony Blair. After a year. <laughs> <laughs> According to Blair, the phone rang. Gordon left a message on the answering machine saying, Tony, it's Gordon here. Can you let me out of the toilet? <laughs> Brown was stuck in the toilet for 15 minutes. An embarrassing episode. But on the plus side, that was when he first had a go at quantitative easing. <laughs> Bing! <laughs> Ian and Nigel, here are yours. Cyclops, Xi Jinping, Osama bin Laden and Fred Flintstone. Uh, I think this is about caves, because um, the Cyclops lived in a cave mm -hmm. when Odysseus and co came in. Osama bin Laden lived in a lived cave. In a cave. Mm. Fred Flintstone had a very nice cave with, you know, all the mod cons and everything in it. Um, and the new leader of China doesn't live in a cave. <laughs> yes. That's you're... not a great answer. I reckon you're pretty good at this. <laughs> you're very, you're, <laughs> you're a very, very low bar. No, it's, oh, that's, uh, They've all lived in a cave, mm. except for Fred Flintstone, who lived in a stone house with all mod cons. <laughs> um, talking of the Flintstones, <laughs> yes. Fred we'll and Wilma's uh, private life uh, e e expanded US social boundaries in the 60s. Mm. Why? You can now sleep with cartoons. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> They were the first couple to be shown in bed together on primetime TV. Before that, they had to be in, in single beds next to each other. That's right. That's right yeah. Oh, and Wilma was a crack whore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Osama bin Laden was reported to have lived in a cave in Afghanistan. What did we learn recently about his beard? He was dying. He was 15 he very specially trained swallows. <laughs> <laughs> he died it. That's absolutely right. He died yeah, it, according died to it. a member of uh, the Navy SEALs, Mark Owen. What else was Mark surprised about after looking through Osama's belongings? There was a box set of The Wire. <laughs> he was surprised by how tidily Bin Laden kept his clothes. Not all bad, then. <laughs> <laughs> Xi Jinping, China's next leader, mm -hmm. and we can be fairly certain, once lived in the cave when his father was arrested during the Cultural, Cultural Revolution. Uh... What will he get to control uh, once he's running China? He gets to control <laughs> the world. According to The Guardian, the world's largest armed forces... And I think they're the biggest economy now, aren't they? They've just overtaken America in terms of... That's hope. fighting words, mister. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> They've all lived in a cave, except Fred Flintstone. After Odysseus's men sneak into the Cyclops' cave and steal his sheep, the giant eats two men after killing them by removing their brains. And that, according to the government's anti-burglar guidelines, is proportionate force. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the missing words round, which this week Here's features as its yeah. guest publication, the Society for Clay Pipe Research Newsletter. <laughs> Fantastic. I get this every month. And we start with... Only a few pipe makers were able to tear themselves away from the misery of what? Self-abuse. <laughs> <laughs> it fits. <laughs> Pipe-making. 
same thing. Away from the misery <laughs> of piping. This is from the Society for Clay Pipe Research newsletter, which covers topics like the economic conditions for pipe makers in early 19th century <laughs> Holland. And it still achieves a bigger circulation than the UKIP newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> Next, why not use your baby to what? Feed the poor. <laughs> it rhymes with that. Clean the floor. Clean is the actually floor. the answer. Yeah, they don't yeah. do anything, children. Get this is an working. invention that uses your baby to clean floors. Oh. Oh. <laughs> There's also a full size version for husbands who come home drunk. <laughs> Next, Prince Charles, I'm a what? Uh, no, this is him using pigeon. I think it's I'm a number one pickaninny belong Missy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> what he actually said. <laughs> Few sausages short of a Barbie. <laughs> Prince Charles is on they tour down under. That. Whilst on walkabout, he wore a traditional Australian bushman's hat. It was a present from his sons. William donated the hat and Harry provided all the corks. <laughs> <laughs> Next, taxpayers, £10,000 bill snake. to stuff Hague's what? Snake. <laughs> it's definitely snake. You've got an antique <laughs> snake and we've paid £10,000 to have it restuffed. Snake. Snake. Got it. Is the correct answer. Correct answer. This... <laughs> well, I've been saying it. Yeah. 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 I've been saying nothing else but snake all night. <laughs> this is the 100-year-old anaconda in William Hague's department at the Foreign Office. A spokesman explained no significant maintenance has been carried out on him in the last 40 to 50 years, adding that the snake is in even worse condition. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, offensive Morris dancers what? Revealed as Iran's secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Told to move on by police. No. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. The lead Morris man uh, delivered his most energetic dance performance ever. Seconds after being tasered. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Ian and Nigel have five. Harry and Paul have seven. Just just before we go, <laughs> there's time for the caption competition. Ian and Nigel have this. Ah, oh, Lord Black, nice of you to come. <laughs> Paul and Harry, get that. <laughs> David Cameron warns against gay backlash. <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Nigel Farage, Paul Merton and Harry Shearer. And I leave you with the news of that in Chicago. One man begins to regret answering yes when his wife asks, does my bum look big in this? <laughs> <laughs> On a tour of Papua New Guinea, Prince Charles finalises his evening plans with his most senior aide. <laughs> and after his narrow victory, President Obama rings Mitt Romney to offer his heartfelt commiserations. <laughs> Good night. More Friday comedy coming up on BBC One. A blind date, a dinner date and a date with destiny for me and Mrs Jones. Next. <laughs>